Hello, welcome to a brand new series on learning Python. By the end of these series, you shall be able to comfortably code using Python, debug erroneous code and also be able to tell others about the history of Python and also the perks of coding using Python. But first, we'll begin with the introduction. First off, the Python we're talking about is not an animal, or is it? That is Python's official logo, sort of like two Pythons curled up on each other. Its implementation was started by a computer programmer, Guido van Rossum, from the Netherlands. He decided to give his project the name Python after a BBC comedy script he was reading, titled The Monty Python's Flying Circus. He wanted a unique and somehow mysterious name for the new language, so he named it Python. It was started firstly as a hobby project because he was looking for an interesting project to keep him occupied during Christmas. Python is said to have succeeded ABC programming language, which Van Rossum had helped create. So he took all the good attributes of ABC, and some of its syntax, removed all flaws, and included some few additionals, and the new scripting language was released under the name Python. Python is useful in the following areas. Website scraping. Creation of web applications and scripts. In artificial intelligence and machine learning. In games development. And also, in development of enterprise and business applications. But why use Python over other languages? For one, Python has a large community of developers that you'll find in places like GitHub or Stack Overflow and you could secure lots of books for reference whenever offline. That is important because you can have your queries answered whenever you're stuck. Python also has a much simpler syntax, and its syntax is much more in line with the natural English language. To illustrate how friendly and easy Python is, we'll compare it against two other languages. C++ and Java. The aim will be to see how easy and straightforward it is to assign a variable, mynom, a value of 5 and print back the value. With Python, you don't have to declare the data type of the variable. In fact, Python has no command for declaring a variable. A variable is created the moment you first assign a value to it. Simply assign mynom, a value, then go ahead and print the same. For C++, we first assign the variable a data type, in this case, the integer data type, which tells the compiler that the variable is of a numeric data type. Then the print statement does not resemble a natural English word, and also includes two less than symbols for output. Java also requires the programmer to first declare a data type. Then the print statement is a three-word sentence whose spellings are a little unlike natural English. Also as you'll notice, the other two languages make use of semicolons to indicate that a command or statement is complete. On the other hand, Python uses new lines to complete a command. And as we'll later see, Python relies on indentation and the use of whitespace to define scope, such as the scope of loops, functions and classes. Other programming languages often use curly brackets for this purpose. It is worth noting that we'll be using Python version 3 or Python 3 for the tutorial series. However, Python 2, although not being updated with anything other than security updates, is still quite popular. The latest Python 2 release was Python 2.7.18, which was released on April 20, 2020. Python 2 syntax is a tad difficult than Python 3, and also differs a little with Python 3, making the latter backward incompatible. 
However, the latest Python 3 release was Python 3.9.4, which was released also on April 4, 2021. Hence that, or any recent version 3 release is the version we'd recommend. For the rest of these series, whenever necessary, we'll make use of Python's IDLE to write and run our programs. You could also download and install an integrated development environment, such as PyCharm, NetBeans, Eclipse, or Thani, which are particularly useful when managing larger collections of Python files. So now you have it, a brief history of Python and some reasons why it's the most popular programming language as of now. Subscribe to the channel and while at it, hit the bell icon so as not to miss any of our subsequent Python uploads.